Okay, so Kid Hood is a British film of the urban variety. It's directed by Men Hajuda and not Noel Clark, who's actually just one of the writers and also one of the stars. And the other stars include Amal Amin, Red Madrill, Adam Deacon, and Jamie Winston. Uh, Nicholas Holt has a small part in it as well, and so does David Ajala. And Femi Oyenaran is also one of the main stars of this film. The film centers around a bunch of teenagers who are given a day of school following the suicide of one of the students. The events of the day that end in a house party make up the story. I actually kind of like this film, even though it's got lots of stupid stuff in it, but like it did spawn many other films and it did launch careers for Adam Deacon, which is probably not a good thing. And, and Amal Amin and, and Noel Clark, you know, they, they got a lot from this film. But with that being said... Let me bait this film up. Mum and dad are away, so anything goes. This kid is trying to get his house trashed. And who are these guys? How in high school are you friends with everyone? Especially when you don't come across as popular. Hey, push you up. Too clear, man. Why is Sam just asking anyone if they've seen her? Everybody doesn't know everybody. Why are you calling me that? You know my name's Claire. If you're scared of a bully, you wouldn't mess with his girl out in the open at school. That's kind of dumb. Somehow he's drilling a hole in a gun in school because his uncle thinks that that's safer than just buying a drill. <laughs> and this nerd actually put his goggles on. What a loser. Okay, they're, they're really going out of their way to prove that Sam is a horrible person. What the fuck are you looking at, you fat bitch? You know what I'm have you seen clear? Can't we kick, man? I'm not your fuck. How long has man been kissing this girl for anyway? Okay, now I'm confused. Did he just leave the room through a convenient side door? Some of these battles, man, all this fucking playing football. Coming across stinking it up afterwards. How can you cuss guys for playing football at break time? Later on, Trife and Jay are playing FIFA, so clearly they ain't got nothing against football. So why did he even say this? Just to have some kind of dialogue? Yeah, probably that. You know what? Them two girl over there are fucking weird black. Okay, now for some reason, Sam has decided to have a problem with these girls. For nothing. But he seems to be close enough to these girls to get them hyped up. Okay, so Mooney is on the left and Traff is on the right. But in the next shot, they're on the other sides. And Mooney gets that finger in finger right on his shoulder. Nasty. Okay, so he screws the teacher and gets him shook. So these sort of actions, even though they make Trav come across a bit more menacing, they also make him a less likeable character. And it also conflicts with the way he's portrayed in the rest of the film. Hey, Alicia's looking sick, boy. Why you spot with her? Okay, her name is Alyssa. Alyssa. Hey, what are you uniform pussy on now about titties and pussy and all them things there? What are you doing chatting about Alyssa? You don't know that I fucked that girl a few weeks ago, black. Every day for a week when she's supposed to be your girl. Uniform pussies? Dude, you're in sixth form and you probably should be wearing uniform too. What even makes you think you're so tough? Like, what? And how do you even know that they're talking about Alyssa? I mean, you just came here from some far off distance, so you clearly couldn't hear what they were saying. Not to mention that he said Alicia. And Sam is a pedo anyway. I mean,. Like, what, he's in sixth form, he's like, he's at least 16, 17, like, damn near, maybe even 18, and his girlfriend must be about 15, 14. That is, that, that's statutory rape. So bad, Phew, lucky the teacher isn't there. Why is this girl talking like she got Jamaican parents? Be Okay, so this one here gives her the softest little pushes and, and seems to get really irritated when she says, leave me alone, please. And then we get this rhythmical slap. Get off. Why do they keep talking downwards to her in the point of view shots? Clearly she's taller than them. So what are you? A slag then? Go on, bitch. Tell everybody you're a virgin. Well... Virgin. <laughs> so no Clark seems to think that it's embarrassing to be a virgin at 15. I didn't even have any girls in my school, but even as a boy, it wasn't embarrassing. It definitely wouldn't make everyone laugh. Hey. And none of you lot better say nothing, yeah. or else you'll get the same as that bitch did with her virgin self. 
Oh, so um, still no teacher. Must be a free lesson. And still with the virgin thing. She ain't no virgin. How the fuck would you know? Okay, that's it, Trife. Now say something cool and witty. Does me and a fuck the day I turned you down? <laughs> we'll, we'll just say that. Just, just say that. <laughs> How's biology? How is biology? What kind of question is that? Is it just so that they have some dialogue? Yeah, yeah, I bet it's that. See, this girl here, she's like one of the better actors in the film. She's only got a small role, but she does commit to it really well. Look, it's President Wensley Dale. School finish at four. Why it takes so long? Why does school finish at four? Cool, huh? Now get out. <laughs> but he knows the gun isn't loaded, right? I mean, he just brought it there. Like, he brought the gun there. <laughs> Later. All right, Trevor. Milical gondrilla. <laughs> Yo, dude, keep it down, man. Stop self-snitching. Where it is better, where it is wetter. On that is seat. What sort of thing is that to say? Aren't you worried? Katie's mom's booze will not be confined by any cardigan, dagnammit. Oh, there you go. She's fine. So now Katie writes herself a suicide note that seems to be all about Sam and nothing about the girls who bullied her and also about how Trife was always nice to her, which we find out later. Then her mum continuously yells for her in a tone that could obviously not be heard over the music. But yet, she doesn't even give her a chance to answer anyway. Then Katie hangs herself from the ceiling? From the light bulb? From the roof? I, I, I don't know what she's got in her room to hang herself from. That's right, Brad, do what your mum says. Yeah, blood. School called it this morning. Told my mum the whole year the day off. So I'm supposed to believe that Katie's parents have informed the school during this sad time. The school have had enough time to contact everyone in that year and tell them that they have the day off all before 8am. And the school can't just give days off anyway. I mean, eventually they're going to have to be there in a day when they're the only year at school. It's proper sad, man. I know, man. I mean, I was just about to leave my fucking yard, like, I had my uniform on and everything. So why you told me that, man? She asked me not to say nothing, in it. What people call a skating thing. That's a dad course. So you are a 15-year-old bad boy and you didn't tell your friends that you hit a girl who, by what we've seen, you don't have anything in common with. I mean, it's not like you care so much about her and even if you do, why do you care about her more than Alyssa? Like, what is it with you and this Katie chick? Where's it with everyone in this Katie chick? Where is it about Katie, damn it? Hold on, what does the dad catching you have to do with it? And why didn't you tell them? Like, why didn't you tell them? The dad come by late last night. That's how I found out she was dead. And as soon as I knew she said something about Sam troubling her. I was always nice to her. Okay, and let's add this to the whole telling the school thing. So her dad, that caught them sleeping together one time, came around the same night that she died to his house because he can't distinguish him between Sam, but he knows his address. And he came and, and what? Told him the whole story. So if school finishes at four and she got home for, let's say, half four and hung herself around six-ish, they dealt with hospitals, police and the school, I guess, and went to Tribe's house all in the same night. Why even go there before Sam's house anyway? I'm sure police would be much more interested in that. And shouldn't you be more distraught considering your daughter just hung herself and you found her dead? What are you doing going around to people's houses for chit chats? What? Did she mention me? I never see you chat to her anyway, man. See, they're in the same class and he said he's never seen him chat to her before. So how close could they be? Is it even necessary to the story that they never knew about it? I want to duck out quick. Don't lie, blood. Yeah, I have to take a cab still. If Jay had his uniform on, 
and was just about to leave the house, how comes Mooney doesn't even know that he got the day off and is still in his bed? And why does he need to take a taxi? Oh, for jokes later. Oh, okay. For oh, fuck's sake. Why does he get so irritated? He doesn't even know who's ringing. Hello. Yeah, who's that? It's me. You didn't call me. So Alyssa calls him and tells him that she is pregnant. And he says it must be Sam. Yeah, fuck that. After you fucked Sam a few weeks ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, he told me bear back to you. You never knew you knew that, did you? But we do know. What? I slept with Katie last year. Okay. So you slept with Katie when you was 14. And that fucking Sam told him we slept together. So why didn't you tell him what happened? He didn't give me a fucking chance. Yes, you did have a chance. How about here? Yeah, fuck that. After you fucked Sam a few weeks ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, he told me bear back to you. That's even worse. You never knew that, did you? But we do know. Or when you brought up sleeping with Katie. Right, I'm off to work. Listen, I want you back by midnight. <gasps> mum. One then, on the dot. Some easily swayed mum. Who in school takes a taxi? Why can't he take a bus or a train? Or even just call a cab? And these are New York problems anyway, and if he gets a cab regularly, wouldn't he be aware of this? Why does she look so shocked? She must have known that her friend was a hoe from day one. But I'm not gonna suck it, okay? When you make your characters do stuff like this just for money, to buy clothes, they instantly lose credibility. Sam lives over there. You wanna get your Game Boy back? Uh, Sam's gonna be a school guard, yeah? Only our year's got a deal. We'll just go up there and say we're friends we're picking up in it. Simple. So for no explained reason, Sam is not at school either. These guys know his exact address and trick his mum into letting them in. They go to his room, where for some reason his brother is also not at school, and they tie him up and put him on the balcony. And it's so nice of his brother to quietly cooperate. No, you can't take his weed, man. How can you tie up his brother and put him on the balcony, but draw the line at taking his weed? Taking his weed? You just tied up his brother and put him on the balcony. Nobody in this film seems to have issues with performing sexual acts with an audience. I'm so, sorry, yeah, this, this don't it, It's okay. <laughs> the side down! Fuck you not doing it in my yard. So why is he even talking? I mean, the way it was shot, it was like he saw the condom in a fish tank, he saw his brother on the balcony, and that would explain why he's so mad at Claire, but it doesn't explain why he's not just swinging that bat recklessly. This was shot like a point of view angle, but Sam is clearly not facing that way. And why is Mooney all of a sudden so brave? So, hold on, they came to his house, tied up his brother, stole his weed, broke his keyboard on his head, sexed his girl on his bed, put the condom in his fish tank, rushed him, knocked his mum over as she brings them drinks. So, who's supposed to be the protagonist again? Because, because I ain't gonna lie, I'll be looking to kill people too. I'm sure Sam would catch him if he just takes the lift. Why even run? I mean, he goes to the same school as you. And judging by the logic of this film, he probably knows your addresses. He can probably just find you lot if he wants to. And, and why not? Why not come to your houses and knock over you lot's bums? You bastards. Alcohol, cocaine, ecstasy and weed whilst pregnant. Yes, no credibility. What blood? I told them no onions. Yeah, you did, man. You did say no onions, man. So, why are they all getting up? Oh, they're all going. I guess they take that onion stuff seriously. Dag, damn it, they put onions in your burger. Well, we'll have to cease to dine at this establishment. But, fam, we pay good money for this food. No, there were onions, fam. Onions. Hey, did I say no onions? Food. Okay, so one bite, onions, throw the burger away and leave with no burger. Why can't you no, just what, catch a bus, so. damn it? So what, I mean, you are or what now? Yeah, yeah, I'm your gal. 
Yeah, she probably just gave Sam some head. How much drugs are they taking? They're not even clubbing or nothing. They're just taking drugs. They're not even high. They're not even high. How many drugs have they taken? And they're not even high. Um, these soft punches aren't going to do nothing compared to all those drugs you're taking. Look, I didn't know he was going to be so old. He's 28. He's an actor. That's almost twice our age. Dude, why do you keep acting shocked by these things? This is your best friend. And she has a whole secret life that you act like you knew nothing about. Plus, you just saw her giving head to like a 40 year old man. And you was a part of that. You even wanted her to sleep with him. But he was wearing that cap when he came in. You sure? Yes, because I greeted him. Thank you! Do you know what? You want your hat so much? Take it. But it's not his hat. So, owns hat, gets accused of stealing, throws hat, leaves with no hat. Fucking prick. Okay, so it's true the youngers are a bit crazy these days, but none of the adults in this film tried to keep them in check. The teacher, the shopkeeper, the cafe staff, the taxi driver, and the security guard let them disrespect them or intimidate them. These are just three 15-year-olds, not a whole gang. Where are the adults like Tribe's uncle who just wouldn't take it from them? Where are those ones that you just wouldn't mess with? All right, okay, listen to this girl closely. I swear it's like she screws up every line. That's all. She needs a little bit of slapping. But was only playing with her. We never meant to slit our wrist. Seriously, what? But was only playing with her. We never meant to slit our wrist. You scared. You killed her. Fucking shut up. You killed her. Listen, wife. Listen, wife. Listen, wife. Listen, white. If you're gonna do something to me, you do it. Why does she go all shy here? I got bigger things to worry about than what you could do to me. Why did she have this face like Alyssa just dropped some knowledge on her and left her to think about it? She literally said nothing to make her feel this way. <laughs> now, seconds later, these girls are back to making threats and hyping by the window. So, what was the point? Like, if you're going to have one of those moments in your film, yeah, it's supposed to be like a mic drop moment where you say what you need to be said and... Well, when you say what you need to say and then the character that you said it to is affected by this and it's meant to be like it changed them for life. Like even if we don't ever see that character again, we need to think that maybe whatever you said has changed their perception, changed how they feel, made them show remorse for what they have done. If they do it and you say those things and then seconds later, they're just back to their normal selves, then what was the point of even making you say that thing? What was the point of that scene? That means you went nowhere. You went nowhere, no clock. You went nowhere. That was a £45 hot blood. Don't just throw it away. These guys are only 15, but the money that they seem to have is ridiculous. Taxis, cafes, and designer clothes with no care in the world. Shit, check the back off through Um, there is no visible back off here. She's bathing as well, you know. See, that's what I want, but I want... I went about his trainers though. Dude, she barely looked at them. Why not? You married? Yeah, my um, my husband's been away a while. Thanks for that additional info, Stella. Actually, sometimes I could use a bit of company. Why are you telling him all this? It's as if you want him to continue his pursuit. Because I wouldn't want to disappoint you. So for no real reason, she takes off her bag and leaves it wide open with her purse on top somewhere where he can secretly take it with the plan to return it to her later. Which he does in a deleted scene that, yeah, um, most of you have probably never seen. And it's, it's a bit stupid. It's really a bit of a stupid scene. But it does make this whole bit pointless. Yeah, it's pointless. Okay, so Jay takes the purse and runs off down some stairs without looking and bumps into some guys, one of which seems to be ready to fight until he is sucker punched by Trev. Yeah, he says this like he's bald, like he's a proper skinhead, but like, you don't a skinhead, bruv, and this whole, this whole thing was stupid and awkward. It's a weird thing to say in a fight, it's, it's, it's dumb. So they rush these guys with the same attack plan that they used on Sam and again Mooney is not at all scared to participate except for when he does the disappearing act. Well man, you think that scares me? 
Man, you don't even know me. Then this guy makes these random statements but does nothing. Then for some reason, this causes a rift in the friendship. Just because the script wants it to. Man, you can't just start arms high in the middle of the street. What's wrong with you, bro? Cool it, Jay, man. Right, man. Cool it, Jay. He's, he's Trife. Jay's the other one. So a little scuff in front of this Mercedes turns into a scuff by this car. Then back to the Mercedes. If Trife is meant to be the tough guy of the group, he wouldn't just let Jay throw the purse in his face. If you were somebody else, I would have stabbed your clock. Stab me then, buddy. And Mooney says he would stab him if he was someone else, but why? He hasn't done anything. The film is creating conflict out of nothing, just a flimsy reason to have the characters part ways. And we ain't backing you no more. Come in, bro. Okay, so even if Jay is upset, why is Mooney involved? Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, blood. Remember, we might call you Traff, but your name's Trevor, remember that, blood. Why would he even say this? It's just like earlier on the train. It's like it's set up to be a mic drop moment, but it's just a random thing to say. That's like me saying... We might call you Spider-Man, but your name's Peter. Okay, sorry, that was mean. I gotta tell everyone what a rubbish fuck you are and how bad you smell, if you know what I'm saying. Why is he implying it? He could just actually say it. They're going to that party tonight. That's where they're gonna be. So why weren't I invited? Um, you wasn't invited because you're a bully and they are not in your year. Um, who is saying this because Please, her lips aren't? Claire, Claire, baby, you all right? Yeah, mum, I'm fine. The mum seems to have been listening this whole time. She must be able to tell that something is going on. Why'd you fuck that fucking Jay? In my job as well! I don't know, I'm sorry. It's all right, it's all right. No, it's not all right, and how come he's so sympathetic? I'm officially confused on who the bad guy is. This one is 210 pounds. Lise, can you not find another one? I really want this one. We've got 300 between us. Yeah, and you said you'd split it. Look, who got the money? Doing your favour in the first place by getting you one. She has a point. She did just fellatia guy for that money. You're lucky to be getting any. £90 is more than enough for a dress for a 15 year old that's just wearing it to a house party. So, Trife goes to meet his uncle and as he does, he sees this guy leaving. But when this guy got here, it was light outside and that was ages ago. How long has it taken him just to pick up one gun? Anyway. What is this on the right? Done, but it's easy, I can be done. Don't speak, just listen. Why did he just yell like this? Was it to make him seem scary and unhinged? Well, pick a character because earlier in the film he was portrayed as a man that can keep his cool when he's pissed off. Let us sell the last of the bad guns to some youth. You did so well with this one. Let me think you should have it. So you mean he didn't even desperately need that gun? So why even make him do it? And why give him a gun that he doesn't need? Did he tell you that he needs to kill or mug someone? When he switched here, yeah, we just kicked out and left him, man. And don't bother trying to call him here yeah, because his phone's off. But why is his phone off? When did his phone become off? How do you know his phone's off? You haven't been with him all this time. And if you're just saying that as a lie, that's just dumb. That's just dumb. No, I really need to speak to him. Listen up, everybody. And this guy here looks like he's harassing this tall girl. This is my nephew, Trevor. And, and what is that you're going to say to him, eh? I'm sorry, Trev. I fucked another guy when I was with you. Because it don't matter, because he knows now. I'm going to tell him the truth. Tell them the truth. What the hell is going on in this place? The school kids' party hasn't even started yet, but these guys are having a whale of a time. Oh, why you handle something from here? And then Tribe's uncle calls him over and then they have some weird moment where Tribe tried to like, I don't know, get on his back or something. Then Curtis gives this dude a hand job. Property, but my money never come back. Okay, so his phone isn't off then. I don't know what kind of sex they were having if he was facing this way. Come like the teddy was the one getting the loving. He gave her bare sex. So she is kind of loose? Bro, 
Ooh, baby, we just got here, like. Get better later. At 15, how could this not be considered a great party? Look, don't worry about your little life, Trevor. Look how she doesn't even try to tell him. She just mumbles a sentence so that he can cut her off. But I thought you ought to know that I never took All right. Know that I never took All right. To know that I never took All right. I don't like. Please. I want to bang you. I'm going to come chat to you in a sec, yeah? So when did she become tough and scary and... Why did that make this girl just walk off? I know we're only going out for a couple of months. It was fun dread. Fun dread? Fun dread? Did he just call the actress by her real name? Or did he just actually call her dread like... Like a rasta? I found out you fuck Sam. Look, Trevor... Wait. Just say it, fool. I never slept with Sam. What? I've been trying to tell you. You wasn't trying to tell nobody nothing. So Sam finally catches up to them and attacks Trife. Where's your two boys? And then we have this pointless, contrived, non-story arc conclusion. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are. Everyone knows she never fucked me. How do they all know and how is that even relevant? Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, I you were a Dude, he's defending you and fighting Sam. That is change. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alyssa. He just got hit in the stomach with a baseball bat. You ain't see that? Why did they all start shouting together? It's almost as if they done it on cue. Then this dumb fool shows up to the party looking for a dude that has no right to be there. And I'm sure this is Mooney's brother in Mooney's brother's car. You better stop fucking talking because I know he's fucking here. Who the fuck is that? Who got out on the weekend, Jack? Me and you will do something nice. <gasps> Bitch, you don't want to hear that. Blood. So Sam, Sam's not here, you know? He's not here. He's Sam! Okay, so this is Katie's friend from earlier. This is obviously her payback for what Sam has done to her and her good friend. But all I'm thinking is, why are you at this party? Your good friend just died and you probably found out that morning like the rest of them. Shouldn't you be in mourning or something? I don't know who you are, guys. I don't know. Why even wear the mask? My little sister Katie. Me one. Why you shouldn't die? Give me one fucking reason why you shouldn't die. Because it's not worth it. I am so fed up with people saying this kind of stupid stuff in films. Look, man's sister just killed herself because of his bullying. Maybe she's worth it. And aren't you dying from a back to the chest? Why are you wasting your last breaths to make these random statements? Shouldn't you be saying something like, Tell my mom I love her. Or, Make sure you raise my baby correctly. Or, Or, My name's not really Trevor. It's Trife. I don't know. Something along those lines. Like, say something meaningful and important. Fitz. Come on! Push yo! You're the pussy old man. So for some strange reason, Sam decides to insult this dude before he goes, making him come back and shoot the gun that jams as Curtis said it would. Uh, what are you talking about? They was watching the whole time. Just like Mooney was. Kid Hood is an enjoyable movie, but not a particularly good one. The plot and the characters are flimsy and things are set up in the most unbelievable ways. The script is kind of weak with silly dialogue and exaggerated ideas of what London life is like. Characters often display characteristics that contradict each other i mean it will entertain us especially because at the time there wasn't really any movies like it in the uk but the acting story and direction will at times pull you out of the film and make it hard for you to take it seriously often playing out like a film a student would make with all the usual things that a student would put in like pregnancy guns drugs sex and the obligatory main character death if you're from london you will relate to some of it but i reckon anyone from outside of the uk might find it not that much of a good movie 
but definitely worth a watch. So, I mean, if you want to give it a try, give it a little try. I mean, it's a new one coming out soon. There's a sequel that's, uh, you know, some people might say is better. Um, I'd say give it, give it a watch. Give it a watch, but don't expect to see uh, many great performances or great lines of dialogue or great scenes and all great directed shots. I mean, the budget was pretty small and... Um, I think it was quite like a risky uh, project to take on. Um, nobody knew that it would reach the success that it did. So just based on the success that it made and how all the success that it had garnered and, and the fact that the writer got so much fame of it. I mean, just for that alone, you have to give the films some ratings. I mean, you know, seldom does the writer get to be known as the the main filmmaker and constantly mistaken for the director so just for that alone i mean i'm gonna give it a bit of a round of applause so i mean in the scheme of movies you know it's it's gonna be like like a low rating maybe like a six or something but i'd probably watch it over most sixes just because um just because it's from my bits in it it's a london film mike all right, that's the bait up. Catch you later. Bait up, bait up, bait up, bait up. I'm going to bait up some more films next. I'm going to bait up some more No Clock. I'm going to bait up that film Shank. I'm going to bait up some more of these stupid films that I've seen around here. I'm going to bait them all up. I'm going to bait them all up. And then I'm going to follow up with some more positive things. It can't be negative all the time. 